Hi there, it's Dermot here. And as you can see there, it says the 12 steps of recovery. And what I've decided to do is I'm just going to run through the 12 steps for people and uh, just to kind of maybe break it down, make it a bit more clear. Um, I know I'm, I'm in recovery myself and I work with people in early recovery. And one of the biggest blocks that they have is an understanding of the 12 steps. Uh, yes, the wording is quite old. Uh, they were written over 80 years ago. So language has changed. So that's my, you know, my main purpose of doing that is just to break it down, maybe make it a bit more clear for people and see if I can help anybody. Right. right so introduction, uh, what are the 12 steps, the history of the 12 steps, who uses the 12 step model, uh, how the 12 steps can be used for any problem in life. And then I'll just summarize that then. So what are the 12 steps? Well, simply put, the 12 steps are a program for living. And a lot of people think it's a program just to help people stay off the drink or get off the drink or control the drinking, but that's not it. Um, yes, the main purpose of step one is to get people to look at their unmanageability and their powerlessness over alcohol, drugs, etc. But it is a program for life. It is a program for living. It's a program about change and about bettering yourself. The guiding set of principles set down by AA is it is an abstinence-based program. And we'll go through that as we go through the steps. Uh, course of action, and like anything in life, if you don't do it, it won't happen. So you have to actually get off your rear end and do something about it. Wishing won't do anything. Uh, and then it's a set of tools to live by. And that's what they are, the 12 steps and 12 traditions are a set of tools to live your life and have a better life. Right, so just a brief history of the 12 steps. Um, now, AA was founded in 1935 by Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob Smith in Akron, Ohio. Now, both men were chronic alcoholics um, who found each other, well, by default. Uh, Bill Wilson was on a business meeting in Akron and he had one option, go to the bar or go look for somebody else who was struggling with an alcohol problem. And that's how they met each other. And I suppose they say the rest is history. Um, now, Bill W. He wrote the 12 steps. Uh, he got inspiration from all over the place, but a lot of inspiration came from a think tank called the Oxford Group, which was a kind of religious based group, and also the first 100 AA members. Now, the 12 steps and traditions evolved. Uh, no one just sat down and thought about, said, here we go. It was from everyone's experience. So they are experiential. You know, what worked for people, what didn't work for people what helped people and what didn't, and that's where they were formed, and that's how they were formed. Who uses the 12-step model? 12-step uh, recovery groups, obviously, AA, NA, GA, Al-Anon, um, and they're primarily used by them, although the principles of the 12 steps, as it says, can apply to any kind of situation or problem that you might have. People have used the 12 steps to give up smoking, they've used the 12 steps to give up other forms of addiction or compulsive disorders, um, even, you know, weight loss, et cetera. So they, they can be applied, you know, if you apply them on anything, they can work. The law of attraction and the 12 steps are one and the same. That's my opinion. And both are spiritually based. And we're not talking about uh, religious dogma here. Um, but, you know, it's whatever applies to you as a, as a human being. Um, it could be God, it could be the universe, it could be the vortex, it could be, you know, whatever, whatever gives you a sense of meaning, purpose and hope. So how the 12 steps can be used for any problem in life. Uh, as I said already, addictions, compulsive disorders, you know, are the biggest challenges anyone can face in life. I know I'm in recovery myself and it was a struggle. You know, I must admit it was very hard not so much getting sober, but staying sober. It took a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of, you know, soul searching, uh, you name it. It was very, a very emotional kind of roller coaster to be on. So, you know, as I said, people can learn, you know, from addictive, you know, active addiction using the 12 steps or can learn to stay in recovery. Then, you know, then these steps can really be used for anything else because, you know, addiction is probably one of the, the hardest challenges anybody will have in life. So just to sum up, uh, again, the 12 steps are a program for living. Uh, they've been in use since 1935, so that's 80 years. They haven't changed that much in wording, in fact, not at all. So they work. So if it didn't work, they wouldn't be around anymore. 
Um, they're used in AA and other recovery fellowship groups, but they are also used in many other groups, uh, especially in America. Uh, they can be applied to any problem, as I said, in life. You know, any change you need to make or want to make, you can use a 12 step uh, program to help you there. Right, so the next slideshow will be on step one, and I'll see you over there in a jiffy.